there, friends. It is so good to see you here again on the Marley Bird YouTube channel or over at joanne.com. This pattern today is very exciting to make and I cannot wait to show you how easy it is. I'm talking about the Knit Finangle the Angle Blanket Scarf. This blanket scarf is truly beautiful and it uses three different colorways of the Karen Colorama Ogo. All you need to know how to do is to make one of these blocks. Once you know how to do that, you can make the rest of this blanket without any trouble. This is a free pattern available over at yarnspirations.com. I've put a link in the video description box below this video. Once you have that free pattern and your Ogo yarn, grab your needles, join me back here, and we will go over the instructions for this blanket scarf, and you'll be on your way making this truly stunning accessory piece. This pattern name is a little bit of a tongue twister. The Knit Finangle the Angles Blanket Scarf. Whew, say that three times fast, guys. All right, so this pattern uses Karen Colorama Ogo in three different colorways. I love this yarn, I love these colors, and I think they have been put together in a wonderful way. We are going to make garter stitch blocks. And as we make these blocks, we are going to use wrap and turns in order to get that diagonal crossing between the blocks. It's very easy to do, but before we can jump in with that, we've got to take a look at page two of the instructions. Looking at page two, you can see that the color placement instructions can be a little overwhelming. You could be like, well, Marley, we only have three different colors of yarn. Why are there so many different letters in here for the different colors? Well, that's because each Karen Colorama Ogo comes with five colors, and we will separate out each of those colors, making them individual colors of yarn. It is recommended right here in the pattern that you place these colors in a Ziploc and then label each of the Ziplocs A through M so that way you know what color is what letter. It makes things really super easy. Now, the color placement is here so that way you can make your blanket scarf exactly like the sample. But listen, if you wanna go rogue, change up the colors, mix and match the different colors of the blocks that you want to put together, you absolutely can do that. This is not the end all and be all only way that you can put these colors together. This just happens to be the way the colors are put together on the sample. You with me there? On page two, you will also find the instructions for how to create the blocks, right? But it is on page three where we begin to see a little bit more about how we assemble these blocks. What is the layout? And that's where I find the most help actually because I'm such a visual learner. On this page, you see that there is a full color placement diagram. And I don't know about you, but I find this super helpful. Being able to see that the, the letter L is this green color and the letter D is sort of this dark wine color and this letter B is sort of this even darker wine color is very helpful to me. I find it so much easier to associate colors in the placement versus letters. It's just the nature of the way I learn. Over here, you will find the assembly diagram. And this is super helpful because you can see how it is that we are actually going to work this blanket scarf. We will start up here with block number one, and each of these blocks are made up of four triangles. And as we create these triangles, it's really like two mini uh, blocks or two rectangles that are stacked on each other to create one full block. Does that make sense? Once we create block number one, we will actually pick up stitches along the side of block number one to create block number two. You see how that block number two points the arrow that way? It's because we're going to cast on, or not cast on, but pick up and knit stitches here and then knit this way. Then you'll see block number three points down. That's because we're going to pick up and knit stitches along that line and then work our way this way and then block number four points that direction. So we're gonna pick up and knit stitches here and make our block this way. What that does is it leaves this space between blocks number one and number four open, and in order to close that up, we are gonna do a very simple flat seam. 
See, I told you you could make this scarf. It is not that difficult. Once we understand how to create these rectangles with the two triangles built on top of each other to create one full block, you're on your way. All you do is keep creating those blocks, connect them as you go, and make this really great scarf. So without further ado, let's first take a quick look on how we're gonna separate the yarn in our Ogo. And then from there, we're gonna get started with our triangles in block number one. All right, so let's go ahead and roll how you do the separation of the yarn. The Yarn Inspirations Karen Colorama comes in a very beautiful collection of five colors. When you get this yarn, you simply will open up your packaging Pop your packaging out. When you have the Ogo, you're gonna carefully pull it apart and you're going to see a plastic section right here. You're going to snip this plastic, okay? This plastic is what's holding the donut together. Once you snip the plastic, you're gonna pull that plastic out. Now, you have two choices. You can pull from the center of the Ogo or the outside. Here's a little tip. The Ogo was actually designed to be pulled from the outside. So even though you can pull from the inside, you want to locate your strand from the outside of the Ogo, and that's where you simply will start pulling your yarn and stitching. And you're gonna see that you're gonna have no tangles, no extra pulls, no knots in your yarn. It is just continuous free-flowing knitting or crocheting. Another great thing about the Ogo is that with the carefully curated colors, you can separate these colors out and use them individually. Let me show you. All you do is come up here and you pull the colors apart. And it's that easy. Come up here and pull the colors apart. Once they're all separated, you just snip them apart. You get this last one out here. So you can see right here where the colors connect, you snip it, that color is ready to go. Right here, the colors connect, snip it, that color is ready to go. This right here, let's find the end, snip it, that color is ready. This one right here, snip, that color is ready. This right here, snip, that color is ready. And I can add this one back over here and look at that. I have a beautiful collection of five colors of yarn. So what do you think? It's pretty cool, right? Having those colors separate so easily and they're already in a condition that you do not have to rewind the yarn. Could you rewind the yarn? Yeah, but you don't have to. Simply put that in a Ziploc, label it so that way you can use it later on. Once all of your colors are separated out, you're ready to get started. So go ahead and grab the two colors you wanna start off with for your block number one. On page two of the pattern, you'll see that block number one begins with triangle number one. And we're going to begin by casting on 33 stitches. Then we will knit one row, and then on the next row, we will knit 31 and then do a wrap and turn. On the next row, we will knit, and the following row, we will knit to two stitches before the last wrapped stitch and do a wrap and turn. And then we continue on doing the two stitches in the knitter row and then two stitches in the knitter row until we get down to three stitches. Doesn't seem like it's that much work and it really isn't. And it becomes easier to see those two stitches before your wrap and turn as you get going. But I wanna show you a little trick that I usually will do before I start a project like this. Okay, I love post-it notes and I find them really helpful. Right here, I know I have 33 stitches and then when it's time for me to wrap and turn, I will be knitting 31 and then doing a wrap and turn. And the following wrong side row, I will be knitting two stitches prior to my previous wrap and turn. So I'm not going to knit 31, I'm gonna knit two stitches less. So I'm gonna knit 29. And then I will do my wrap and turn turn and knit back. So what I do here is on a post-it note, I go ahead and write down all of the numbers that I need for the rows that I need to do in order to complete my triangle. And as I complete each row, I can sit here and tick off that mark. 
You see what I mean? So instead of trying to remember, oh, I have to go two stitches before the last wrap and turn, and sort of trying to recognize that wrap and turn, I can simply follow along with the numbers I have written down and I find it a lot easier. The other thing we can do is add a stitch marker to the wrap and turn so that way we can easily identify it and count two stitches before the previous wrap and turn. So we're gonna do that as well as keep track of our stitches right here with our post-it note and we're gonna get started on triangle number one. Okay, you guys know me and I love the long tail cast on, but you'll notice in the notes section, it does mention that we are supposed to leave a nice long tail for seaming on our first block. So I'm going to make sure that I have a nice long tail remaining. So I'm going to make sure that I'm putting my slip knot way up here and I should not use all that yarn to cast on my 33 stitches. You can use whatever cast on method you prefer. I happen to like the long tail cast on, so I'm going to use that for my 33 stitches. 33, all right, so I have 33 stitches there. I have a nice long tail remaining, and one thing I can do to kind of tuck this tail out of the way is just wind it up in a figure eight manner, and then wrap the yarn around that figure eight, just like so. Grab my yarn, twist it, and just pop it around and create a nice little yarn butterfly. So now it's out of the way and I can use that for seaming. All right, once you cast on your 33 stitches, you will work a right side row, and this right side row is going to be knit. All right, so we're going to knit this first row. So let's go ahead and knit down our row. Once you've completed the first row, go ahead and turn your work, and it's on this row that we are going to knit down 31, and then do a wrap and turn. So this is going to be our very first wrap and turn, and you will continue to do these wrap and turns for the entire triangle. So let's go ahead and knit 31, There's 31, so that leaves two stitches. And here's what you're gonna do for your wrap and turn. Bring your yarn forward between your needles. Take your right hand needle, go into the next stitch as if to purl, and slip it off of your left hand needle. Bring your yarn between your stitches back to the back. The stitch that you slipped, I want you to put it back on your left hand needle. And now you turn your work. That is a wrap and turn. On this row, we are gonna simply knit, so you bring your yarn between your needles back to the back, and we are going to knit. Now, before I get too far, I told you that I was gonna show you how you could use a stitch marker to identify that stitch. So we've done this wrap and turn, right? So what you will notice, it's hard to see on the yarn itself, but you're gonna see, it looks like there's a wrap essentially strangling the stitch itself. Just take your marker and stick it directly into that wrap. Now you know, as you come back down the next time, where your wrap and turn is. You'll quickly be able to identify it, okay? So that stitch marker is gonna help you identify it. Now on this row, you're just knitting. So this is my row three, and I'm knitting all the way back, okay? When you get to the end of the row, turn your work. And this is row four, and in the pattern, this is when the pattern tells you to knit down until two stitches before your wrap and turn. So essentially, you're gonna be knitting down until you get to this stitch right here, and that stitch is gonna be your next wrap and turn. Now, we know that that's the stitch we're gonna knit to because that's two stitches before our actual wrap and turn that we have marked. The other thing we can do, remember, is we know that the last time we were down there, we did a knit 31. So this time we can say, oh, we're gonna knit 29 and then do a wrap and turn. So that's how you can use your post-it note to make that work. So let's go ahead and pick up our work and knit 29, which should bring us to two stitches before our wrap and turn, all right? 
and here we go. Let's get my yarn and I'm going to knit 29. Twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine. Okay, there's my stitch that was wrapped and turned. Can you see the marker is right on that stitch? And I have two stitches before my wrap and turn. I knit twenty nine, so that means everything is perfect. And now I do a new wrap and turn. So I bring my yarn forward between my needles, take my right hand needle, go into that stitch, and slip it off. Bring my yarn between my needles back to the back and then place that slipped stitch back onto my left hand needle. Turn my work, bring my working yarn back to the back because I'm going to knit this next row. I'm on a row five which is just knit. So I'll knit all the way down. Now, if I want to, you guys, what I could do is take this marker and move it over to my new wrap and turn, or I could even grab another marker and mark the new wrap and turn so that I have markers all the way down my row. Totally up to you. You don't even have to use markers if you don't want. You can use the post-it note with all of the numbers written on it, whatever works best for you. When you get to the end of your row, you can turn your work and you'll see that the instructions say to go ahead and repeat rows four and five until you get down to three stitches. Now I happen to already be down to that point on another block so I'm going to bring that in so that way you can start to see how these wrap and turns are going to show up on your knitting needle when they're completed. Okay, it's slightly different color here and a lot brighter, I think. But one thing you'll notice here is with each of the wrap and turns, it looks like there's like a set of two. And so as you're working your wraps and turns, two stitches before the previous wrap and turn, you're gonna notice it looks like you get this set of two happening. And I have stopped up here where I have three stitches left, right? I have three stitches left and I'm ready to work the last bit of this triangle. Triangle. So let's go ahead and we are going to work what would be called the next row wrong side. And so I'm going to knit one and then work a wrap and turn. So bring my yarn forward, go into the stitch as if to purl, slip it off, bring my yarn back between my needles, and then put that stitch back onto my left hand needle and then turn my work. I want to knit this next stitch. So I want to make my, sure my yarn is behind and knit that one stitch. Now I turn my work and this time I'm going to go ahead and just knit all 33 stitches. And I do not have to pick up my wrap and turns. If you've ever done wraps and turns before, usually you have to pick up the wraps and knit it with your actual stitch, but not when you're working with garter stitch like this. We're simply gonna knit all of these stitches. It's really super easy. So I'm simply going to just knit all 33 stitches all the way down. Very, very, very simple. The wraps and turns are hidden with the garter stitch, making this super duper easy. And you've just done this really fantastic triangle wedge shape, which will be part of your rectangle, which will then become part of your block. So as you put together four of these triangle wedges, you get that great block. Pretty neat, isn't it? So when you create your wedge this way, where you start off with all 33 stitches and then work your way down to where you get down essentially to one stitch, right? That creates our wedge looking like this. Now, for the wedge on top of this, we need it to go the opposite way. So instead of starting with 33, we will end up beginning with one. 
all right? So once you get to the end of this row, you go ahead and you break this color or cut this color. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip this yarn to cut that color and you will grab the next color of your triangle okay so whatever color you want to proceed with so I'm going to go ahead I'm going to stick with this is part of the lippy colorway so I'm going to stick with the lippy colorway and I'm going to grab this really beautiful sort of almond color okay and we're going to pull the yarn from here and we will continue so I will turn my work and I'm going to go ahead and knit all of these stitches with the new color. So I'll grab my new color here and knit. So I will knit all 33 stitches. Okay, so let's go ahead and get down the row. And I will do this for two rows. So you go ahead, do the same thing. Let's knit for two rows. When you get to the end of the second row, don't worry about these yarns becoming a little bit big or these stitches becoming a little bit big. Once you weave in those tails, they'll tighten up nice and snug. But here we go. So let's take a peek. We're back to the right side of our triangle. And what's gonna happen is we're going to begin to work our wrap and turns starting down here. So we will begin with a knit one and then a wrap and turn. Then we knit back and then when we turn our work to go back, that's where things change because we're gonna go one stitch past our wrap and turn that we did and then wrap and turn the next one. So we're going in the reverse angle, okay? And that's gonna give us a triangle that will fill in this portion of our block, giving us a rectangle. Now, once again, you can use a stitch marker to mark off your wrap and turns, or if you bring in your post-it note, one thing you could do is for the pink one, right? We came down and we followed this way. On the way back, you could go the opposite direction until you get back up to 33, you know what I mean? Because we're gonna be going, um, it'll be one stitch, then three stitches, and then five stitches, and then seven stitches, and the wrap and turn, okay? Does that make sense? So you could go the opposite direction to keep track. And you would do this until you get down to where you have one stitch remaining after the last wrap and turn. Once you do that, your triangle is 100% worked. So let's go ahead and get started with this one right here. So we begin with a knit one, and then we wrap and turn. By this point, you should know how to do the whole wrap and turn. So you turn your work, and we will knit one. Turn our work. And now we're gonna go one stitch past our wrap and turn. So we are gonna end up knitting three and then work a wrap and turn. And then knit those three. Turn your work. We're gonna end up knitting five this time. One, two, three. There's my wrap and turn, so there's four. Here's one stitch after my wrap and turn, that's five and then I do another wrap and turn. This time we'll end up knitting seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is my wrap and turn. Here's one stitch after my wrap and turn, that's my seven. And now I do another wrap and turn. See how this works? And what you're getting here is this wedge is beginning to form, go in the opposite direction. This triangle is beginning to form, going the opposite direction, and it will fill out this portion of the block. See how that works? Okay, you see how it's already starting to fill out? So let's go ahead, let's keep going until we get down to the end here so we can see how we finish off one of these like double triangle sets.
This is my last row that will take me down as a knit 31 and then I'll do a wrap and turn. And that's where I'm supposed to be to finish this particular triangle. So let's go ahead and get down to the end of this. Let's get down there. And you will see what I mean here. So there is 30, here is 31. And here is my wrap and turn. Okay, so there's my wrap and there's my turn. And that leaves me with one stitch on the outside of my wrap and turn. You see that? Now you go ahead and knit all the way down to the end of this row. By knitting to the end of this row, this has us end with essentially the sixth row. You know how this is the repeat of just the knit and we're knitting down 31 stitches. And when we get to the end here, we're actually going to cut this color. Even though we have not worked all 31, we left that one stitch down there unworked, you will actually work that one stitch on the next triangle, okay? So essentially right now, half of our block is complete with these two triangles stacked on each other. So as you make the third triangle, it is built on this one right here. And when you do it, you repeat the instructions for this triangle. So you'll start off with a knit 33 stitches. All of those stitches, you'll knit 33. In the interest of making sure you fully understand what I am telling you to do, let's go ahead and get started with our third triangle. I'm gonna just get you started here. And essentially, grab whatever color is supposed to be worked next on your block, okay? So this will be your next color. And you're going to knit all of the stitches. So we will knit all the way down this row. And this is considered a right side, all right? So this is our right side. We knit all the way down with our third color. This is the third color in our first block. It's pretty, pretty easy. Once you've completed this first row of all knits, you will turn your work, and this puts us on row two. Okay, remember we're following our triangle, our first triangle we did. So we are going to knit 31, and then do a wrap and turn. Come down here. We're getting down to our 31. This will be 31. Bring my yarn forward, pull that, put it back, and that is my wrap and turn. And then I will knit back. And then I am on my path once again to create a triangle just like I did the first triangle. So as I continue on, I knit all the way down this row, and when I come back, I will not be knitting 31, I'll be knitting 29 and doing a wrap and turn. Then I'll knit down and then I'll knit back 27 and do a wrap and turn, so on and so forth. And what that will do is create another triangle just like our triangle number one. So this triangle up here in this really pretty sort of wine color will look just like this sort of hot pink color here. And then once this is complete, you'll have another triangle just like this. This will be your triangle number four, which will be on top of this one. And the four triangles there complete one full block. It's after you create that full block that you will then work on the side of the block pick up and knit stitches and do it all over again. Now, because I know some of you don't really know how to pick up and knit stitches, I'm gonna bring in the sample and show you on the sample how you would pick up and knit stitches along the side of your block. And just remember, this is all you need to know how to do for this entire blanket scarf. You need to know how to create these triangles and how they work together to create the blocks and then how to pick up and knit stitches to create another set of triangles to create another block and so on and so forth. This is a really nice, relaxing, easy knit.
trust me on this. And the way the colors all play together, oh my gosh, it is so pretty. All right, let's learn how to pick up a knit and then you will be off to the races making your very own finagle the angle blanket scarf. <laughs> I love that I could use the sample to show you how to pick up and knit stitches along the edge of a block. Now, when you pick up stitches along the edge of the block, you will be picking up stitches along these rows, okay, with these ridges. Now, there are not exactly 33 ridges, okay, so you're gonna have to space out your stitches the best you can. I would just eyeball it. I wouldn't stress too much about it being completely perfect. I would just make sure that you have at least one stitch right up here in this corner and one stitch right down there in that corner and then make sure everything else is evenly spaced out. Now you can pick up stitches in a couple different ways. The first is you have these nice garter ridges, right? You have these nice garter ridges. And you could just put your needle in to the side of the ridge here, just like so. You see how you can pick up to the side of the ridge? You can have those big bumps there. You could put your needle in there, yarn over, let's get some yarn here. Yarn over your needle and then pick up and that would be your knit the stitch, okay? So this is your pickup, and then this is your knit. You see that, okay? And it's really just that easy. You can go in, that's your pickup, yarn over, pull that yarn over up, and that's your knit. So this is your pickup and knit. Now, if you do that for every single ridge, you are going to have too many stitches. So you want to make sure that you're spacing that out. So this is if you wanted to go in to that little bump on the ridge. I really like that way. That's my preferred way. I've also seen people who will go in between the ridges. So they will just stick their needle in in between the ridges. Can you see how it's in between the ridge there? And then they will yarn over and pick up a loop. So then over here, instead of going through the, the bump on the ridge, they'll go between the ridge, stick their needle in, yarn over, and pick up a loop. So not through the bump, not through the next bump, but between, and pick up a stitch, okay? Both of them look relatively the same. This is between, this is through the bump. You decide what you like best, okay? But once you get all 33 stitches picked up from this point to this point, you then are going to proceed to make another triangle building your block number two in this direction, okay? I told you this scarf was really easy. Once you know how to do the triangles and then how to pick up and knit those stitches, you're off to the races. It is so easy to make this scarf. Now, does that mean it's gonna be fast? No, it's a lot of knitting. The good news is it's big yarn, big needles, and the yarn is luscious, and the colors are fantastic. As you're working on your blanket scarf, be sure to share with me on social media. Use hashtag MarleyBird, hashtag YarnSpo, or hashtag Handmade with Joannes. We love to see your work, and while we're out there, we will smash your like button. Okay, guys, I love this blanket scarf. I cannot wait to make one for myself. There are so many color possibilities. I am, I'm just, I'm super excited. I know you are too. So go ahead, grab that Ogo, grab those needles and get started. I'll talk to you guys again very soon. I'm Marley Bird. Bye guys. <laughs>